Hello students, welcome to Shirtback Academy. In our lesson today, we're going to be continuing with the code.org sequencing module. If you're not there yet, please go to the code.org website. Once you're there, we're going to begin our lesson by clicking on Learn in the top left corner. We're going to scroll down to where it says Grades K-5, to click on the silver Learn More box. On the next page, we're going to scroll down and click on Course C. And we're going to be doing Exercise 6 today, Collecting Treasure with Laurel. Once you're there, we're going to click on the number 1 and watch our intro video. You're about to get the chance to play with a new type of puzzle called the Collector. These puzzles are a lot like the ones you've already seen, except for a few important changes. In each puzzle, the collector will look for items to grab. When she gets to them, she won't be able to simply run over the items to pick them up. Instead, you will need to use the collect block to grab each pile. Be careful. The number of items that need to be collected to pass a level will change. Sometimes, you only need to collect one pile. In other puzzles, you need to collect everything. Make sure you pay attention to the instructions to find out what the rules are before you start. Now that we've watched our intro video, let's click on the orange continue button and we're going to begin coding with Puzzle 2. Here in Puzzle 2, we have a free play level. This is an introduction level to get used to moving Laurel around the play space. Here in this puzzle, it's telling us to move around and get as much treasure as we can. Remember that we use the collect block to pick up our treasure. Here in this puzzle, I'm going to just collect one gem. To get to our first piece of treasure, we're going to trace a path. And if we wanted to continue to get all of the treasure gems, we would continue down the same path. To begin our code, we're going to bring over a move forward and a collect. Then we're going to bring over a turn left and a move forward. That would start the path if we wanted to continue to the second treasure. Now we're going to take a look, make sure our code looks good. Then we're going to click on run and see if it works. Great job. If you want to continue and try to code for the rest of the treasure, please do so. You can always go back and redo a level by clicking on the green replay button. We're going to continue and move on to puzzle 3. Here in puzzle 3, our instructions are asking us to move Laurel to the treasure and use the collect block to pick it up. Let's take a look over in the play space and trace the path for Laurel to get to the treasure. How many move forwards did you count? I counted four. I'm going to bring over four move forwards and connect them over in my workspace to the win run block. To finish off my code, I'm going to bring over a collect. Our treasure is at the very end of the coding path. Let's take a look at our code and review it. We have four move forwards and a collect. We'll take a look at our workspace and then we're going to run our code to see if it works. And we can see that it does. Great job. Let's click continue and move on to puzzle four. Here in puzzle four, our instructions are telling us the blocks we need are in the workspace but not connected. Let's order the blocks to collect the treasure and solve the puzzle. We're going to start by tracing our path for Laurel to get to the treasure. We're going to start our code by bringing over two move forwards and a turn left. This will take care of the first part of the path. The second part of our code will be a move forward and we're going to finish it with our collect. 
The collect goes at the end because the treasure is at the end. Let's review our code one last time. We go forward, forward, left, forward, collect. Let's hit run and see if it works. And it does. Great job. Let's move on to the next puzzle. Puzzle 5. Here in Puzzle 5, our instructions are telling us it's the, that the blocks we need are in the workspace but not connected. We need to put them in the right order to solve the puzzle. Let's take a moment and trace the path from Laurel to get to the treasure. We'll trace the path to get to the first treasure and continue to the second. To begin our code, we're going to bring over a move forward and a turn right. From there, Laurel is going to go forward three more times. I'm sorry, two times. And then a collect. Let's take a look at our code. For the first half, to get to the first treasure, Laurel is going to go forward, right, forward two times, and collect. Let's hit run. So far, so good. Now we need to get Laurel to the, to the second treasure. Let's finish our code. The next command we're going to bring over is a turn left. And then Laurel must move forward two times to get to the treasure. We'll finish our code by bringing over the last collect command. Let's review our code one last time. We're going to hit reset and run. As I'm using the step button, you can see that our code is working perfectly. Great job, everyone. You're getting the hang of it. Let's move on to puzzle six. Here our instructions are telling us that our coding blocks are in the wrong order. How can we fix them? Here in our workspace, we have our program code. And now let's trace our path from Laurel to the treasure. We can see right away that we need two move forwards to begin our program. So we've found our first mistake. After our two move forwards, we're going to bring over a turn right to point Laurel on the second path. When we hit run, so far, so good. Now to get Laurel to the treasure, we're going to move forward two times and collect. At the end of our code, we're going to add another move forward and collect to get the last treasure in the path. Let's take a look at our code, hit reset, and run. And we can see that our code works great. Great job, everybody. Let's move on to Puzzle 7. Here in Puzzle 7, our instructions are telling us that our blocks are in the wrong order. We need to reorder them to collect all the treasure. Let's trace the path for Laurel to get to the treasure. We can see to get to the first treasure, Laurel is going to have to move forward. We're going to have to turn left. Move forward again and collect. Let's check our code. Forward left, forward collect. We'll click run. And our code is working, is working well so far. Let's trace the path to get the rest of the treasure. Let's build our code. Next we're going to move forward. And then we're going to need to turn right. From there, we can go forward collect, forward collect. Let's take a look at our code one last time. We'll hit reset. 
and we'll hit run and see if our code works. And we can see that it does. Great job. Let's move on to puzzle eight. Great! Puzzle A is a challenge puzzle. They're designed to stretch our brain. Let's see how we do. Here in puzzle 8, our instructions are telling us that even if we put our blocks in the right order, we are missing some. We're going to need to collect all the treasure in this puzzle. Let's trace the path. For the first part of our code, we can see that we can get the first three treasure by going forward collect, forward collect, and forward collect. We do that pattern three times. When we hit run, we can see that Laurel gets the first three treasure. To continue our code, we're going to turn right and move forward two times. and collect. This should get us to the second treasure. Our code is working great so far. Let's trace the path to the last treasure. To finish our code, we're going to bring over two more move forwards. A turn left, forward, and collect. Our puzzle, our code is getting long. You can see now we have 16 blocks in our workspace. Let's take a moment to review all of the coding blocks, and then we're going to hit run and see if it works. As we trace our code, we can see that we get all the treasure. Way to stick with it guys, that was our longest puzzle yet. Challenge puzzle complete. Let's move on to puzzle 9. Here in puzzle 9, let's trace our path from Laurel to the treasure. We'll begin our code with a move forward, collect, move forward collect. That will get us to the first two treasure. If you notice in the path now there's a empty space in between the second and third treasure. So now we're going to bring over two move forwards. We don't need a collect there. Let's take a look at our code one last time. Take a look at our path and click run. And we can see our code works great. Let's click continue and move on to puzzle 10. Here in puzzle 10, our instructions are telling us to get all the treasure. Let's trace the path for Laurel to get to all three treasure. We can see that the first part of our code, we're going to bring over two move forwards, a collect, and turn right. When we hit run, Laurel gets the first treasure. Now to get to the rest of the treasure, we're going to move forward twice collect, and turn right. Now you can see we have our code is starting to develop a pattern. If you look at our code, we should see the pattern of forward, forward, collect, right. Forward, forward, collect, right. We can keep the same pattern going to get to the last gem. Let's repeat our coding pattern. Forward, forward, collect, Turn right. 
When we hit reset and run, we can see that the same coding pattern works for all three treasures. Great job. Encoding patterns are a very important part of it. We're starting to learn how to recognize them and order them. Here in Puzzle 11, our instructions are telling us to help Laurel collect all the treasure. Let's trace the path to the first and second treasure. We're going to begin our code with a move forward and a collect. That will get our first treasure. From there, we're going to turn left and move forward. We'll hit run. And we can see that our code works so far. Now to finish our code, Laurel is going to need to turn right, move forward, and collect. Let's check our code one last time. We'll hit reset and run. And we can see that Laurel is still getting treasure. She's a rich girl. We got two more levels. Let's finish strong. Here in Puzzle 12, we have a multiple choice. It's telling us to look at our code carefully. What do we think will happen when the program runs? Let's take a look at our answer choices. Answer choice A says Laurel will collect four pieces of treasure. Answer choice B says Laurel will try to collect treasure, but there won't be any. Answer choice C says Laurel will collect all the treasure. And answer choice D, I don't know. Let's take a look at our code. Our code tells us to move forward, collect, turn left, move forward, collect, and so on. Now let's trace our path for Laurel to get to the treasure. What do you think will happen? I think Laurel is going to get four pieces of treasure because there's four collects in the program. What do you think? I'm going to choose answer choice A. When I hit run, let's see what happens. Oh, we all make mistakes. I was wrong. The correct answer choice should have been B. We can see from our code that when Laurel run moves forward the first time, she tries to collect and there's no treasure. Learning from our mistakes is a key part of coding. Let's move on to puzzle 13, our last one. Here our instructions are telling us to collect as many pieces of treasure as we can to finish the stage. Let's trace the path for Laurel through the treasure. Let's see how many we can get. With this level we're going to introduce something new called a repeat. A repeat is a block that allows you to put a command inside and repeat it a certain amount of times. This helps to save coding space and time. Here what I've done is I've brought over a repeat and I've put inside of it a move forward and a collect. I'm also going to set it to the number three because I want Laurel to collect the first three treasure in the row. Now when I hit run, we can see that Laurel gets the first three treasure. We're going to continue and see if we can get a few more. From here I'm going to turn left and I'm going to bring over another repeat. This time I'm going to set it to 2. Inside I'm going to bring over a move forward and a collect. The reason that our repeat for this time only says 2 is the next row only has 2 treasure. Let's hit reset and run. We do the first repeat turn left, and repeat two more times. Great job, we've collected five treasure. If you'd like to continue to try to get the rest, please hit replay and continue on with our code. That will conclude this lesson, Collecting Treasure with Laurel. If you have any questions, please go back to the review the video at the appropriate puzzle times.
We thank you for following along to this video. We'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone.